Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Honeycrisp Apple Tart for one. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make a fun size apple tart that looks like something that would come out of a professional pastry shop, yet is so simple and so easy. It could be made by someone who's never baked before. And we're going to do all this with just a few ingredients and no special equipment, unless you consider a potato peeler special equipment, which believe it or not is our secret weapon to make this recipe. But first things first, and before we get to that, we have to prep our crust, which is going to be super easy since we're using a sheet of frozen puff pastry. And what we'll do is take a cutter the exact same size as the ramekins we're going to bake these in, and we'll go ahead and punch out two pieces. Oh, and if you don't have a set of these round pastry cutters, don't feel bad. Just simply place the ramekin you're using over the dough and trace around with the tip of a knife. And then what we'll do once those have been cut and placed on a parchment line pan is take a fork and dock the dough. And docking is just a culinary term so we don't have to say pricking the dough. And by making a bunch of holes in the dough with a fork like this, that's going to help prevent it from puffing up too much and also allow steam to escape. And then later on when we bake this with our apple, it's going to help us produce a beautiful crisp crust. And that's it. Once we finish docking, we can move to baking as we're going to pop these into a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until they look like this. And then what we'll do is slide these off the pan so they cool down faster. And by the way, I would love for someone to tell me why these turned out oval. I mean, weren't those round when we put them in the oven? So I was a little confused by that. Anyway, while these are still warm, we'll give them a little pressing with the fork to sort of deflate them a bit which is going to help give us a little bit of a crispier texture later. And then what we'll do is let those cool down while we move on to our sugar mixture, which will include some brown sugar, some white sugar, a small pinch of cinnamon, and an even smaller pinch of salt, right, just a little bit. And once all that's in there, we'll give it a mix and simply set it aside while we move on to butter our ramekins, which is an easy but crucial step since we really do want to be fairly generous here because butter is a key ingredient in any successful apple pie or tart. Okay, so don't be shy. And we really do want to make sure these are very, very well buttered. And then once those are set, we'll take our sugar mixture and we will evenly distribute it between the two ramekins. But we don't want to put every last bit of it in at this point. Okay, I want you to save about a teaspoon and a half so that we can apply that to the top of our apple later. And that's it, once those have been sugared, We'll go ahead and give those the old shake a shake -a. And then we can set those aside while we move on to prep our apples. And by prep, I mostly mean peel. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and trim a little bit off each end, which may or may not be necessary. But for me, I think it helps square this off and also helps me cut this right in half a little more evenly, which is the next thing we need to do. At which point we'll grab those two halves in our pull down style potato peeler and we'll head over to a nice cold fresh bowl of water into which we're gonna squeeze about a teaspoon of lemon juice, which will help prevent our apples from oxidizing, but also maybe give them a little tiny hint of flavor. And then what we'll do here is take our peeler and go ahead and peel each of these halves into as long a ribbons as we can, at least when we start out. And no, we're probably not gonna use those first few inches of the peel since it's mostly skin, but as we go around, we're gonna get into the flesh, which as you'll see, we're eventually gonna roll up to form what's basically going to be our apple filling. And while it's nice that the first few pieces end up kind of long, as long as these ribbons are like three or four inches long, we're good. And even if you do end up with a few really short pieces, those can get stuck in here and there and still be used. And basically we're going to keep peeling like this until we get all the way down to the core. And then what we'll do once we peeled as much as we can is pull out three or four of our longest ribbons and we'll go ahead and line those up as straight as we can. And then we will start rolling from one end as tight as we can without it breaking to form what's basically going to look like a rose. And as far as portioning goes, depending on the size, probably one apple per tart is a good guess. Although who knows, you might need one and a half. And if you have to peel some more, you'll peel some more. No big deal. And then once we have that center formed, we can go ahead and turn it up on its end. And then we'll simply take ribbons out of the bowl and we will coil them around the center. And by overlapping the next piece, that will hold the previous piece in place. And we will simply continue on repeating that process until we have a coil of peeled apple exactly the same size as our ramekin. And I'm sure you've heard me say many times that surface area equals flavor. So by making our filling out of these rolled apple peels, we are utilizing a ton of surface area, which is going to give us a ton of apple flavor. Okay, this is why deli sandwiches always taste better, since they're cutting their meat paper thin on a slicer. 
As opposed to us at home with the exact same piece of meat, and we're hacking off like quarter inch thick slices, right? Same meat, totally different sandwich experience. So it's not a perfect analogy, but that's basically what's going on here. But anyway, once we have this built up to the same diameter as our ramekin, we'll go ahead and pick it up and transfer it into our ramekin on top of the sugar. But we'll do that with the flat side, the side that was on the table facing the sugar. Because eventually once this bakes and gets turned out, that's gonna be the top. So I went ahead and did one more. And yes, as the recipe name would indicate, this is a Honeycrisp apple, but any baking apple like a Granny Smith will work. And then what we'll do before we add our crust is go ahead and place over a little bit of butter, right, not too much, maybe half a teaspoon or so, followed by that little bit of sugar mixture we saved, which I said was gonna be like a teaspoon and a half. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle that over each one, which if my math is correct, is gonna be about three quarters of a teaspoon. And that's it, once our apples have been buttered and sugared, we'll go ahead and place over our puff pastry rounds with that golden brown side up. And by rounds, I mean ovals. And I use that time-tested technique where if it doesn't fit, just force it. Oh yeah, I learned that putting Ikea furniture together. And since these were pretty close to round, it wasn't a major deal, but it was still a little bit annoying, mostly because I'm not sure why it happened. But hey, that's why I like cooking so much. So many mysteries. And that's it. Once I had my oval pegs placed in my round holes, those were ready to transfer into the upper center of a 425 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until the tops were round and the syrups were bubbling. And they looked like this. And then what we'll do while these are still piping hot is take our fork and give them a little pressing just to sort of compact everything down a bit. At which point we'll let these cool for about 10 minutes before turning them out on a plate. But before we do that, I like to go around with a knife just to make sure our pastry is not sticking to the edges. So we'll go around with the tip of a knife to make sure that's not happening. And that's it as far as the dismount goes. We will simply tip that over onto a plate and hope for the best. And as you can see, mine came out beautifully, except for that one little peel in the back, which I simply pushed back in place. So yes, while these are still warm, you can go ahead and take your fingers and fix any imperfections. Although, like I said, I was very happy with how this came out. But why just be happy with something? when we can possibly make it look even better. So if we want at this point, we can take a spoon and just sort of go around in between those layers, just separating those a little bit and give that top surface a little more definition. And that's it, we can serve it like this since it is absolutely gorgeous. But if we want it to look even more professional, we could if we want brush a little bit of simple syrup over the top, which as you know is two parts sugar to one part water brought to a boil. Or in the bakery, we would brush over some melted apricot jam and that's just to give the top a little bit of a shine. And then last but certainly not least, I'm gonna finish up with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Or instead, if you want, you could use a scoop of whipped cream. Or Michelle's recommendation, some whipped creme fraiche. But of course, that's gonna be up to you. I mean, you guys are after all the Kenjis of how to present these. But no matter what you serve alongside, once you grab a fork and dig in, I think you'll agree this is not just one of the most beautiful apple tarts you've ever seen. It's gonna be one of the most delicious. And that's because we hardly did anything to it. I mean, we don't need to. We have buttery, crispy pastry, just a massive amount of apple flavor, with it being sweetened just enough with that little touch of sugar and cinnamon. And what's really interesting here, even though those pieces of apple were super thin, the texture in the final product is not soft and mushy. Right? Somehow, some way, the apple actually retains a little bit of firmness, just a little bit. And what I really love so much about this little tartlet besides all that stuff I just said about the taste and texture, is that pretty much anyone, whether they've ever baked anything before in their life or not, will be able to produce something that looks like it was made by a professional pastry chef. And believe you me, they are not happy about it. All right, they want everyone to think this stuff is super hard. But we're on to you, pastry chefs. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling Honeycrisp Apple Tart for one. Whether you're looking for something to make for that special someone on date night, or you just want to trick your guests into thinking you have professional pastry skills. Or, and this might be the most popular reason, you just wanted one portion of what's basically a perfect apple pie. But no matter what your motivation is, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.